Hello friends, today we would be doing the identification of bromide anion. Preliminary test, the dilute sulfuric acid test is negative here. So we go on to the concentrated sulfuric acid test. The salt is white in color, so we roll out the cations like chromium, copper and nickel. For the concentrated sulfuric acid test, I have taken the solid salt in the test tube and now I will be adding concentrated sulfuric acid. Since the acid is corrosive, I am using a test tube holder to hold the test tube and using a dropper to add the acid. In the inset, I have already added manganese dioxide and I am doing that inset video in a different way. The actual method is given in the main video. The second step is to add the concentrated sulfuric acid into the salt. Here I am adding it with the help of a dropper because we should always add concentrated acids with dropper to avoid spillage of the acid as it is corrosive. Observe the reaction when I have added the acid. You can see that a brown colored fumes are being produced in the inset that is the uh, salt and the manganese dioxide reacting with the sulfuric acid but just adding sulfuric acid into the mere salt has not yet produced much of the reaction now we are heating the test tube and observing the reaction on heating the test tube the inset video is showing a lot of reddish brown fume and in the the bigger video you can see that there is a bit of a uh, brownish colored uh, films are being produced but it's not obvious so now we would be adding a pinch of manganese dioxide manganese dioxide is acting as a catalyst here to speed up the reaction okay now you can see that after i added the manganese dioxide the brown colored films are now very evident which means the reaction has taken place much faster the salt reacted with concentrated sulfuric acid to produce the bromine gas which got intensified on adding a catalyst manganese dioxide. The inset video which I did is given under the confirmatory test in your NCRT gate. So you can follow that method or just do the other one. Now we go on to the confirmatory test for bromide. The first one is the classical organic layer test. We will be adding chloroform and chlorine water to the aqueous solution. So the first step in organic layer test is to take the aqueous solution of the salt. Take a generous amount of solid salt to make the solution a little bit concentrated. The second step is to add the organic solvent. Here I am using chloroform. You can either use carbon disulfide or carbon tetrachloride. Both are uh, good organic solvents which are heavier than water. So you can see that when I am adding the chloroform, it is going under the water layer and it's forming a separate layer underneath the water because it is denser than water because of the presence of lot of chlorine molecules on them which increases its molecular mass. Now you can observe the two transparent separate layers. Now we will be preparing the chlorine water. It is prepared very easily by taking a little amount of potassium permanganate solution and adding concentrated hydrochloric acid into it until the color of the potassium permanganate changes to a pale brown color. Finally we have the color change here. It has turned to a pale brown color. Now we will be adding this freshly prepared chlorine water into the mixture of water and chloroform. You can see that there is no much appreciable color change when I added the chlorine water into the mixture. Now we will shake the mixture very well. Now observe the color change in the bottom layer of the test tube that is the chloroform layer. You can see a yellow to orange color. The chlorine reacted with sodium bromide to produce the bromine gas and this bromine gas combined covalently with the chloroform. Next confirmatory test is the silver nitrate test. Here we take 
aqueous solution of the salt and add silver nitrate solution and then we add ammonium hydroxide. The first step is to take the aqueous solution of the salt, here I have taken that. Now we will be adding the silver nitrate solution and observe the reaction. You can see that when I added the silver nitrate solution, there is formation of yellowish white precipitate. It's called cream colored precipitate. Now, as we did for the chloride ion, we will try to dissolve this precipitate in ammonium hydroxide solution. Here I am adding the ammonium hydroxide. Initially, a little amount of ammonium hydroxide was added. Actually, the amount of ammonium hydroxide I added now should have dissolved the precipitate if it was a chloride ion, but it didn't. So I added more amount of ammonium hydroxide and you can see that the precipitate has dissolved. Silver nitrate reacted with bromide to produce silver bromide, which is not easily soluble in ammonium hydroxide. That is because of the high solubility product of silver bromide. I will tell you a bit about the solubility product. When the concentration of the anion and the cation in the solution exceeds the specific solubility product, the substance will precipitate. Here diamine silver was produced. It consumed the silver ions present in the solution, thereby reducing the solubility product of silver and bromine. Precautions Sulfuric acid is corrosive. Chloroform is toxic. Avoid inhalation. Bromine vapors are very strong respiratory irritants. Avoid inhalation. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to my channel and click on the bell button so that you won't miss my new videos and get notified.